Um, I know from personal experience working for North Somerset Council how well we work together, how supportive they've been uh, working together in, in partnership on many things, and it has made a real difference. Um, I think we've got a, a very good team working for us, um, and she's made it quite clear um, that she really is accessible to everybody in the community. She does a lot of these meetings, and I know she works a lot of the time in the community, and that's what I think has set her apart um, from, from previous times. So I hope I suitably embarrassed you, but I do mean that, and you know, we, we, we do work well together anyway. Um, so thank you for coming. Uh, I think Sue is going to make a, a presentation. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Andy. Then, then Andy, and then do you want questions at the end? Or? Yeah, we have questions at the end. We'll take questions at the end. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and, and there you go, already. Hello. We have more. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so um, thank you all very much for being here, and I'll hand you over to Sue. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nigel. Thank you. Can I stand up? Does the mic come? Or shall I sit down? Can, can you sort of over there sort of move a bit into the middle then it just makes it a bit easier to have a conversation actually I think I can sit down I think that would be easier that would be great thank you thank you very much for coming on such a um, a, a wet and uh, grim evening it is it is much appreciated and you may you may ask you know what is the point of having meetings such as this well, because you can ask any question that you like, and between us, we'll know the answer, or at least we'll know someone who does. Um, because, obviously, having the Police and Crime Commissioner here, the, and the Chief Constable, and Chief Inspector Leanne Pook, who is the Area Commander, that we will be able to, uh, I hope, uh, explain some of the reasons to some of the questions that you may not understand, but we will get a lot more out of this than you may get out of what we're going to say. It's because you will ask us questions about where we have not delivered the communication well. So if you don't understand something about why something's happened, that is probably why we, we need to improve. So please, once we've finished the presentations, please feel free to, to ask us um, what you want. So, I am um, the Police and Crime Commissioner. I was elected in 2012 and I was re-elected in 2016. Um, uh, there are only seven um, female Police and Crime Commissioners in the country out of 41 and there are only three independents. And independents mean very much independent, um, <coughs> not, not aligned to any, any political party. And I know there, are, there may be some politicians in the room and I don't wish, and I don't wish to, to insult them in any way. But actually, one of the re main reasons I stood in 2012 is that policing is a really complex business. And I don't think party politics should have any say whatsoever in, in, in working, with the, uh, working with the police. <coughs> so my masters are you, Avon and Somerset residents. And that's who I work with, and that's who I deliver. To. And that is my agenda in keeping your community as safe and strong as we possibly can. So, I hope that you will find it interesting tonight. And what we're going to do is you'll hear from the three of us. So, what, let's just talk about my role. My role is to be a bridge between local people and the police. So, I do many of these forums. I do drop-in sessions, I had one, uh, I've, I've just come from one in Easton um, and we do, and last week we were out in Cheddar and a number of other places. So I, and we're here to listen about uh, how you'd like your policing run. However, let me assure you that if I asked you what you would you like, I'm sure most of you would say you'd like more police and you'd like all, all your stations open. Yeah, me too. But who's going to pay for it? And that is probably the one thing now that you will hear from me throughout this evening is that we are very uh, restricted on our funding. We've had to find over £80 million savings over the last few years. We still have to find another £16 million over the next couple of years. We have ring-fenced NAPO policing <coughs> teams because that's what I said I would do in 2016 and with the support of Andy Marsh, the Chief Constable, is that we will continue to ring fence neighbourhood policing for the next two years. 
Um, we have a, an announcement that will come hopefully on Thursday from the government about what our funding is for next year. But, um, we need to say we don't hold our breath for what the, police, what the policing minister or the Home Secretary are, are going to say. Um, but it's, it's not only the police that are being cut, it's, it's, it's local authorities and uh, austerity has hit everyone very hard. And the problem is, when austerity has, as austerity has hit, is that the police service, instead of being the service of last resort, we all, we all know that the police has always been the safety net. But now the police service is a service of first resort because ambulances, you know, I'm not throwing brickbats at ambulances, but if the, if the ambulance know that the police are, are with someone, they may not come out. They may come out three, four hours later. So we have a, a real issue with the fact that everyone has been cut and everyone retracts, which is why if you look at mental health, mental health is, accounts for about 40% of police work. Police, we've had to use police funding to pay for mental health nurses in our call centre. Now, it's worked brilliantly. But I do get hacked off, and I love the NHS to death, but I do get hacked off when we get announcements of 2.9 million going into mental health for the NHS. And could we have a bit of that? Could you pay for the mental health nurses? And then I could pay for more police officers. So it's, 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 it's a matter of that we do have to work together, and we do work well together, but we are having to pick up so much of, of, of other people's work. So, after having gone out to consultation, we have four um, priorities in the Police and Crime Plan. I think we have copies of those here. Yeah, out, out, outside. First and foremost, to protect the most vulnerable from harm. Secondly, to improving local policing teams. Thirdly, to make sure the constabulary have the right people, the right kit, the right culture. And then finally, to make sure that we are working with other organisations, working together, because we cannot be a silo on our own. Let me talk about the first priority, because this is the one that I feel passionately about, and that is protecting the most vulnerable from harm. This is whether you are children, older residents, or those who are mentally ill. So I talk about that we've had to invest in nurses in the uh, control room triage, uh, and that has saved a lot of uh, people who are suffering a psychotic episode from being used in going into police cells. Nothing can be more terrifying than going into police cell if you're suffering from and anxiety attack. Um, and if we just looked at Nelsey alone, for those of you who come from Nelsey, mental health calls have, got, have increased by 51% just in one year, year on year. That's a phenomenal increase. And that's to the police. So mental health concerns me a lot, but it's also what concerns me is the way that criminals are targeting the most vulnerable. So we look at cybercrime. We look at, the chances are that you will have all, those of you who are online, will have all had some sort of phishing email. Um, my stepdaughter only announced today that she's now waiting for a card, a new card, because she responded to a TV licence. I didn't have the heart to say that I've been targeted every day on TV licences. And in fact, I got to the stage on Sunday night, I went and checked to see if our TV licence was still in. It's all very well deleting ones, thinking you're fishing, but it could have been, could have been right. However, the point is that the victims of cybercrime is happening um, all the time. And it's, it, you are more likely to be a, a victim of cybercrime almost than all our other crimes put together. So, you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done on that. Um, about 40,000 reports of fraud a month go to action fraud from the whole of the country and we have about 35 fraud cases that come back to us from action fraud that we need to, um, to investigate. Because the, the problem with fraud, cyber fraud particularly, is that it is, the victim may well be in Avon Somerset, the long arm of the day is that the perpetrator is also in Avon Somerset. The perpetrator may not even be in this country, maybe in Russia, maybe in Vietnam, maybe China. So it's very difficult for what can Avon Somerset do, which is why I'm really pleased that the, we now have a National Cybercrime Coordination Centre so that they can look at the patterns that affect across, uh, across, the, across the country. But also protecting the most vulnerable, particularly is looking at child sex exploitation. 
Now, we, we may well have heard the words about grooming, and some of you may not know what that means. And so, what I want to do, and some of you will have seen this, so forgive me, so I want to share a short video released last year by Leicestershire Police. It's called Kaylee's Love Story. And it just is a, 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 um, it's a real story, and it's very hard-hitting. But the whole point of it is so that you can understand what grooming can actually mean. And at 15 years old, Kaylee thought she'd found love. And 15 days later, those things had changed. <clears throat>
languages without being hard hitting because you need to understand about exploitation. You need to understand about what the police are up against. And although the internet and the digital world is a tremendous thing, but it's out of control in many, for many, particularly for, for, for young people. If you think about that one in seven young people have taken a semi-naked or a naked photograph of themselves and they have put it onto the internet. They may think that they are taking it and, and giving it to a, um, a best friend, in fact the boyfriend that they may love. What happens if when that boyfriend isn't their boyfriend? And what happens when their boyfriend is in fact not a boyfriend who may be 13, but a 55 year old man living in another part of the world. So when my kids were upstairs doing their homework, or not doing their homework, I always knew they were safe. But this doesn't, now we've got to the stage where children all have, nearly all have smartphones. And the fact is that they are not safe, and that's why it's important for you as carers, parents and grandparents to be able to explain to children that when things go wrong, because they all get sucked into certain things by peer pressure, that they, they're able to talk to you. Because we have had some horrendous things um, where children have self-harmed because they cannot cope with the pressure and the embarrassment of what goes on. So it's a, it is, this is the world that the police are now uh, 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 are working in. And, and I think that we all have a responsibility of safeguarding our young people. The second priority is making sure local policing teams. So as I've said that we, um, we ring fence local policing, we've invested that in um, mobile technology, so they now all police officers and PCSOs have body-worn cameras. They, we are rolling out, out um, thousands of, of laptops. And you could say, well, what's the point of having laptops? The whole point is, is that with a lot of police work, you can criticise it that's called bureaucracy. But somewhat, one person's bureaucracy is another person's evidence. So it's very important that we do record everything that's been done. And so by giving uh, officers and PCSOs those laptops, they can stay out in the community. I don't want them in police stations. I actually want them sitting in coffee shops so that you can talk to them and, make, and so that they're accessible to you. That's one of the things that you keep telling me that you want officers um, to be accessible. They're not accessible if they're sitting in a police station. So, uh, and, and that has changed the way the police, we've only just recently rolled them out, but you will see over the next few months a real change in the way that neighbourhood police, and perhaps Leanne will talk about that as well. The one thing I, I wanted you to take away, if you're not going to take away the, the fact that we're short of money, the other message I want to be very clear about is that the constabulary belong to you, doesn't belong to me, Chief Constable, or Leanne, or the government, it belongs to you. And therefore what I have is a number of panels that come in to what was uh, maybe been perceived as a, as a closed organisation. So you can see how the police do their jobs. So we have a panel that look at the way that uh, they stop and search. We have a panel of lay people just like you of looking at the way that police deal with complaints. <coughs> we have a panel that look at you know, use of force and, 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 a and, and also a custody visitors who go in into the, um, the custody suites and look at making sure that detainees are being treated fairly and, and with respect. So we have a whole group of people from across Aden and Somerset that come in and see how the police are doing their job and that they can make, um, they, 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 they write a report and that is on the website. It doesn't get censored by me or, or the constabulary. So you can see it warts on the wall, wall. And you will also see the constabulary's response because the whole idea is that we're trying to improve the police. Every day we come to work and we're trying to improve the police service because the police work on consent and you have to have trust in the police. Now we're lucky in Aden and Somerset, we have nearly 80% of people that trust the police. Now obviously I'd like everyone to trust the police, 
there's always going to be a certain number that are never going to trust the police because they would rather the police weren't around. But we police by consent, and that consent is being about transparent and being open. So being open, transparency doesn't just mean about telling you when we do things well. It means also when we do things badly, when we hold our hands up, we say we're sorry. But that's, that's where you'll get your trust, if you believe that the constabulary is transparent. And all the time we're trying to improve that transparency. So finally, one of the things, the, the, the final priority is making sure that we're working together effectively. And you know, you may say, well, what, why is that? Well, because we've all been cut and we need to all work together. So you will see in Nailsey that we have a joint police and fire station. And in fact, there was a joint open day when hundreds of people came to have a look round. And that, I think, is the way of things to come, that we will be working with the local authority where we, we have um, uh, our, our inquiry desks within um, local authorities, as we, as we have in, in Western, working with fire, working with a whole raft of other organisations to deliver, because after all, at the end of the day, we are to, trying to deliver stronger and safer communities, because that's what, what we want to do. Um, just finishing on the funding, uh, we raised the, uh, um, the council tax by £12 in this year and uh, we hope that we're going to be given authority by um, the government to, to raise it uh, £12 again next year. And what have we done with that? Well, we've ring fenced neighbourhood policing, we have recruited, in the process of recruiting, 300 officers and additional PCSOs so that we will be not running on vacancies, um, hopefully going into the, into the new year, because too many teams have had vacancies and we have not been able to afford to replace them. So there is a big push now on making sure that we have the right number of officers and PCSOs, so by that alone you will be able to see what your council tax money has been spent on by having those additional officers. So, Thank you very much for, for listening. I'm going to ask Andy to say a few words and then Leanne and then we'll have questions. Thank you, sir. Do you reckon, can you hear me okay? Is that amplified or is it me you can hear? Doesn't matter, does it? One way or the other. Um, right, okay. Um, I'm going to be brief uh, because I'm very interested in listening to your questions. Um, but I want to start off with making a few, a few thanks. Nigel, you opened the meeting, um, and thank you for, for being our host today. And North Somerset District Council are really good partners to open Somerset Constabulary. It's important when none of us have got as much money as we might quite like to spend on public services that we shrink together and not shrink apart. And North Somerset is, is certainly one of my favourite partners to work with, so thank you for that. Um, We're a unitary authority, not a district council. Sorry, yeah, of course. <laughs> I almost got it right. Yeah. Thank um, you, anyway. Our most important partners are the public though. Um, we police in the United Kingdom with consent. We're routinely unarmed, we're low on powers, uh, we're uh, high on accountability, thank goodness for that. Uh, and actually we can only do it because the public wants us to win. And the people, the members of the public, some of them are past colleagues, I know that, and that have come tonight. And we thank you for coming out in, in an evening and supporting us. And I appreciate um, my dedicated team uh, that are here to support the meeting and help us answer any tricky questions and maybe get to know you a little bit better. Sue uh, told you a little bit about what's happening in policing. I'm not going to talk about the money because I think it's been covered quite well. But I am going to talk to you about the changes in demand that we're facing. So I joined Avon and Somerset Constabulary as a constable in 1987. Um, since then, lots of things have happened, including some bright spark event in the internet. Um, since, the, since I joined, there have been literally hundreds, if not thousands, of additional offences put on the statute books and the job that these officers do um, today is hugely difficult, um, hugely more complicated than the job that I did in the 1980s and uh, actually as chief one of my key purposes is to make sure they've got the right equipment and the right leadership so they can flourish and do a great job for you because that is exactly what they want to do. So that, that, that's my job. In terms of what's changed, um, we, we heard a little bit about the internet. All, all of us are subject to efforts to defraud us. Sometimes you don't even realise it. Um, literally thousands of offences every single week. 
Um, but the internet has also become a playground for some other unpleasant people. Um, we all know about the sharing of indecent images of children being raped and abused. Uh, actually, it used to be fairly um, secret, covert this. I think most people would know that we've got technology to see who's doing that on the visible web. We turn it on every single day, and, and the numbers of people we find viewing those images um, go into the hundreds. It's a lot. Now, actually, um, with Sue's support, I've been able to double the size of the team looking at that, but it's still only eight people, and they're only able to conduct maybe 100, 110 warrants. I went on one a couple of weeks ago every year, and they triage and risk assess the most dangerous people um, who actually um, are abusing children. Now, we know that the academia research tells us that most, most people who view images of children being raped or abused actually are or will conduct a contact offence. It's really important that we stop them. So that, that's changed. Um, we've seen increases in the number of sex offences that we record. They've pretty much trebled in 10 years, which is a remarkable increase. Hugely complex, hugely um, difficult offences to investigate. Um, we've seen uh, significant increases in hate crime, and we can all have a debate about the reasons for that. We've seen spikes around any terrorist attack. We, see, we saw spike around Brexit. Um, and the number of reports is significantly increasing, and certainly some hate crime is still very significantly underreported. And for instance, disability hate crime and hate crime is significantly underreported. Um, domestic violence has doubled over the last three years, and just to give you an idea of the volume of this, about 120 domestic violence situations reported to us every day in Aiken Somerset. It's a lot, it's a lot of crimes. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the, the volume of demand, Three quarters of a million calls a year our call hunting centre um, uh, answer at, at Portishead. Um, lo losing amongst, if not the lowest, um, percentage of calls of any call hunting centre um, in the country. So we're very, we're very pleased that, that we're able to do that. Um, we've seen an increase in issues around mental ill health. Um, you say, well, what are the, why are the police getting involved in that? Uh, actually, because our role is public safety and protecting the vulnerable. So um, does anyone, um, apart from my officers who can't play, and I don't want to embarrass them either because they might not know the answer. Anyone know how many missing people we might have reported to us every day in Aiken Somerset? Have a stab, come on, humour me. We'll be, we'll be here a long time. 20? Uh, 100. Steve, yeah? A any, anyone else? You, you, you're in the right territory. Um, so it's uh, 28 a day. So that's almost 8,000 a year. Now, now actually, here's the, here's the really critical bit. Um, almost half of them are children. And uh, actually, you know, who, who in the room is a parent or a grandparent? Yeah? Uh, you imagine how desperately worrying it is if you don't know where your children are and you're worried about them. And what we know, what I know as a, as a police officer, I've done it a long time, is that actually when children are missing, they're vulnerable to sexual abuse, drugs misuse, crime, and other harm. We, we know that, and these aren't all the children, but of those 28, about eight of them are seriously intent on trying to kill themselves. They're suicidal. And believe it or not, so when you hear people like me say that what the police are doing, well, 20% of it is spent tackling crime, the rest is dealing with social crisis, these guys sometimes are almost full-time looking for people trying to kill themselves. And the frustration is that we take them to a place of safety and sometimes they come straight back out. So um, that is how, I, I, didn't, I spent very little time when I was at the police constable looking for missing people, very little, if any time. And some people um, here, I, I know, served, served with me, is it Roger and Yeah, uh, uh, and, and Brian, it taught me a lot about policing when I was a young lad, wet beyond the ears. This is different work to what we used to do, isn't it? Um, so so um, the world's changing and what the, the police do is changing. Something which does touch your communities, which I would have thought would be a concern to you, is a phenomenon called county lines. People heard of that? Has anyone not heard of it? So County, county Lines is a, effectively an organised drug dealing racket. Um, the, the way in which the criminals work is that the more serious organisers of this crime, adults, will send young people, mainly from cities, into rural counties and towns to set up drug dealing networks. All of the drug dealing is done between local people, your children, your grandchildren, people, some people you know, and the people in London on these county lines mobile phones. And the people doing the running, and they're generally children, so they're teenagers. And they will tend to take over a flat of a vulnerable person. They might be someone with disabilities, they might be someone with learning disabilities, and they will ruin their lives. And it leads to terrible harm, and they'll drill, deal a massive amount of drugs 
um, to local people. Now, we, we know that in Haven and Somerset, outside of Bristol, we've, we've got mapped, we know about 30 county lines that are active outside of Bristol right, right now as I stand here. We're obviously taking enforcement action against them, but pretty much as quickly as we knock them down, they're replaced by other county lines. And unfortunately, that crime is associated with these young people doing it, actually, to an extent, have been trafficked into it, and they don't know any better. You know, they, their lives should be diverted into constructive employment and other uh, occupations. They should be having fun aged 14 to 18. Um, so, in a sense, they're, they're uh, victims of this, but in another sense, they're incredibly violent. And we've seen a significant increase in knife crime and stabbings in April and Somerset. And um, you know, to make to make the point, barely a day goes by with, without one of our major hospitals, and this is m not only um, Bristol. This is Boston, Supermare, Yeovil, Taunton. Um, goes by without a young person turning up with a story about falling on, on their own machete. And you know, that sounds ridiculous, but they won't, they won't grasp the people up um, that are doing it to them. So look, this, this paints, because we're, we're, most of us, without wanting to do a disservice to you, there are some exceptions that are, are older people. Um, this sounds quite frightening, and you need the police to protect you. That is our job, and that is what we do, and we're passionate about it, we care about it. I would say that caring is the ultimate professional advantage in policing. We deal with people sometimes having the worst day of their lives, we need to care for them, so we need to support each other as, as well. Um, now, how, how are we going to tackle this then? And this is what Sue charges me with the responsibility of doing, as your Chief Constable, um, is that we want to be an outstanding police force for you. Now, an outstanding police force in 2018 isn't going to be all things to all people. We have to understand what we're passionate about and what we want to be the best at, and that is the issues that Sue talked about in her plan, and we are ruthless in pursuing them. And the way that we will do this is that we'll be careful with our money. We've restructured the force, and there are lots of things we'd like to do, but we have to do the best with what we've got, and we've restructured it around a number of principles. We've decided that we will deliver centrally what we can more efficiently and effectively deliver centrally. So that means that our response officers now that come to emergencies and all of these jobs they, they actually are a force-wide asset, and they go across the borders of the local territory to deal with the jobs and the demand. And what I know is that, unfortunately for you, um, North Somerset and West Supermare is a very high demand area, so you are a net beneficiary. We are always sending um, people into North Somerset to help out with that. So that's a, a good thing for North Somerset. One of the, but, but doing something centrally, we recognise that some things can only and best be done locally. And I'm talking about neighbourhood policing and safeguarding. Safeguarding, because we do it, and with our unitary uh, partners in North Somerset, <laughs> and very good they are. All right. um, but, but local policing, neighbourhoods. Now the neighbourhood team are led by Leanne Poop, and so one of the other things that we decided is if you're going to do it locally, you've got to have a visible boss. Leanne is the go-to person, she is in charge. If, there are pro if Nigel comes to me with some problems, I can say, well, have you spoke to Leanne about this? What's she doing about it? And actually, fortunately, people say lots of good things about Leanne's leadership, but every area has got a visible local authority area, has got a visible leader, and we put our best people into this, unashamedly, it's so important. Now, Sue, Sue said to me, can you protect neighbourhood policing? And actually, we can, it's been difficult, but we've done it through saving money on our estates and centralising um, some of our capability. But we've protected the number of beat managers uh, and PCSOs at just under 700. Now, some police forces have literally wiped out local policing. We can all hark back to a golden age, but we've still almost got 700 people that dedicated to policing our local communities to knowing and being known and solving the problem and engaging the young people so that we're working 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the future. And actually, we are, we are seriously trying to build the, the foundation of something very special in our communities in Open and Somerset. A police force that is known and loved, and that 80% confidence level isn't high enough for us. We want higher, and we can and we will do better. So some of these things are modern, and some of these things are traditional. So Neighbourhood policing is a traditional innovation of my time in policing. PCSOs are probably one of the biggest revolutions I can remember in policing in the last uh, 32 years of my service. But traditional policing isn't enough uh, in the 21st century. So if Sue talked a little bit about technology. Um, we, we are national, if not international leaders in three, three aspects of technology. So the first is the body-worn video. All the officers and PCSOs have got it. Not many forces, only, only two can say they've done that, but, but actually they capture great evidence, they speed processes up, they've reduced complaints. Um, they have an impact in so many different ways, but we were the first force 
in the United Kingdom in June of this year, having campaigned with the Home Office to allow us to use the cameras more expansively, we are the first force to be able to interview suspects, not at police stations, using these cameras. We are now working with the Home Office to use them, to pilot using them to take statements. We are an innovative force around this technology. The second area, um, Sue talked about the mobile um, devices, which you can do everything out in the field, including witness statements, um, building files that you can do in the police station. So we hope to give our officers and PCSOs the tools to get out there as much as they can, um, except in the zone.